And now I'm going into the library for the Constance Old art opening. And uh, let's see if... Howdy. Yes, I'm... Oh, yeah, why not? Okay, geez, oh boy, look at this. Not just a little. Just yeah. And here are most of the people that were down at the Historical Society. Oh, check out her artwork. Jeez, it's gorgeous. Look at this. Wow. Hey. I'm in the witness protection program. So oh, you are? Okay, well, what's your name? John Doe? John Doe. Okay, all right, John. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs> and here is the artist Constance. Hello, Brenda. great opening. It's oh, wonderful, great you show much. too. Jeez, well, thanks incredible for stuff. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Well, how are you? Very yeah. well. Thank you for coming. It's nice to see you. Curiosity. I'm gonna wander around and get more video. So. Yeah. Wow, look at all this neat stuff. What do you think of the show? <laughs> oh, okay. Put that on the internet. It will. Do it, will. man. Do it. I will. I will. Do it. Okay. Oh, look. Rabbit ears. Rabbit ears. Yes, okay. All right. All right. Okay. Richard Mayon. Yes, Don't okay. I have my permission to put this on the internet? I do. Okay. All right. Well. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about the works. Nora Prentice. I'm going to try to do a five minute. A five minute? Yeah. Oh, Max, will you okay. cut me off, Joy? Yeah. I'll cut you off. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Oh. So I, I'm Constance. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. It's great to see everyone, especially since I haven't been in Cornwall much. No, you haven't. <laughs> um, and now I'm back. So, um, and, and my uh, my excuse is my lovely mother, who lives in Pennsylvania and is aging. So I've been with her, and now it's going. I've been going south, going south, going south. And now I've been from north, north. So hopefully, I'll see more of everybody. Um, by way of explanation, because I know people here have some of my other work that involve barcodes or printmaking or maybe some fiber work. Believe it or not, to me, all of it's related, but I will explain how. Um, the, so my training's as a graphic designer. Becky, where are you? Hello. Mm -hmm. And so type and words and all of that is of interest to me. I was also a comp lit major, so okay. everything's finally coming together, right? Nice. So, um, and in my fiber work, I used to make, I originally made some pieces with words in them that like, I own this made all out of sales receipts or plastic floats forever made mostly out of New York Times delivery bags. And I found that I had way more phrases in my head than I had time to make fiber pieces from them and generally they weren't as concrete as those two either. So I started writing down the phrases and if you want to look at some point in this case, you'll see a picture on the second shelf that's a, a wall in my studio with a lot of the phrases pinned on it. So I'll be driving, I carry around on that same shelf, there's my book of lists in three volumes. I, t I tear up all the paper that comes into the house, make little pads of four by five sheets of paper and bring them with you everywhere. So I have a phrase in my head, I write it down, pin it on the wall, decide which one I'm gonna work on. And then I write basically a journal entry about the phrase. That's the handwriting that you see in the back. I use that as an armature for a little underpainting. So, I create some arbitrary system that I then follow. So if I pull out all the words I with a circle, whatever um, this, I, I'll try to pick one. Here this says connection, 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 I, 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 you. So I pick certain things and if they, if they repeat, I then code them with a color or whatever and the, and the, the, um, the painting emerges from that arbitrary system. Okay. Last layer. Stickers. These are. This is an example. All the letter forms, all the uh, words, are made out of pieces of these stickers, which were 
which gets back to the piecing thing, the fiber work, you know, so it is related, like this, and the graphic design, like, eh, 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 part of my personality, that comes out in the letters. <laughs> and uh, so these were long, long strips of colored dots, all shapes, all, not all shapes, all circles, um, all sizes and colors that were the backdrop for a crew, J. Crew window display. Right, right, right. So like a big commercial display. Right. I went in and asked the manager, um, you know, I'm an artist, I like to re like reuse materials, could I maybe have those stickers when you're finished? I think I can make something with them. She said, I would love to give them to you, but I have to ask corporate. Right. <laughs> so, which was the first placard that I made, and I've now made and sold that one five times because it seems to resonate with a lot of people having to ask for it. And I came back and I said, I'm, I'm still here, you know, I'd love the sticker. She said, oh, I'm just going to give them to you. So when I write about it, I write about her breaking out from the corp orate and making a unilateral decision and breaking the mold. And, and so I inherited really a lot of these, which as I like to tell people, is not a palette I would lean toward ever. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm much more in the neutrals generally, although as I've gotten older, I've gotten more open to being colorful. Right. My mother's really happy about that. Anyway, so, uh, so and so is my cousin Nick, yeah. who's, been, <laughs> who's been telling me to use color for years. So anyway, that's why on this dark, almost solstice day, you're here looking at very brightly colored things because I inherited the palette and decided to make something from it. Oh, that's great. So thank you so much for coming. And that's it. And there's lots of food and drink and all kinds of good things, so please help yourselves. Um,